by its very nature, it's also going to be a huge social event, right? Like it'll 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 transform the way society is structured. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Alex Svetsky, who is an entrepreneur, author, and Bitcoin advocate. In this video, Alex Svetsky talks about Bitcoin, his upcoming book, How Bitcoin Can Save the World, The Value System, and Unequality of Wealth. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. I still, you know, would be labeled toxic to all of that sort of stuff. What I'm just doing, this is more like a personal decision, is that I'm just getting off all the screeching on Twitter. Like, in over over the last couple of years, out of frustration with the dumbness of the world, like, I just... I mean, I, I started on Twitter as, like, writing really good articles. And it was funny, I went back and I read some of my early Bitcoin articles, mm -hmm. and there was no, you know, fucks and shits and, you know, stab this person or, or... I mean, obviously, I don't write that stuff, but, you know, like, it, it wasn't angry. Like, I could just see the tonality was very different. I was, like, genuinely out there just telling people about why Bitcoin matters, for example, you know, or, you know, how, uh, you know, we could look at Bitcoin through an anthropological lens. And I, I wasn't getting political. And then just over 2020, we got radicalized. And all I was doing was talking about how dumb the world is, how stupid everyone is, the sheep, all this and that. And it's not that, I mean, I probably 95% of the things I pointed out were accurate in the end. Um, I mean, we did our, we did our podcast, remember? We did a three hour podcast yeah. on, on that stuff, right? remotely yes during covid yeah 2020 yeah it was actually march right like yeah. we were talking about and it was just as the lockdown started and i mean you remember my position so i've always been consistent on that i haven't been by the way my position's evolved yes yeah so your your position's evolved and i'm, and I'm happy that it has because i think it's evolved in a into a better direction mm. um whereas my positions stayed the same the entire time i've hated all of it lockdowns and all that sort of stuff but the price that i've had to pay for that stuff um, you know, I've had to move away from my business. I've had, you know, I've been canceled on every single platform. I've Have you? I've banked Yeah, man. Like at some point, like, I mean, I think I'm on my third Twitter account. Okay. Let's, so, uh, let's work through that. So hold on. You were moved away from your business. What do you mean? That That's a longer story. That's a, yeah, different one. Can you tell it? No. Okay. Yeah. Can tell us, tell us when the mics are off. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you were kicked off Twitter for saying what? What are you now, Ghost of Svetsky or Ghost of the Ghost of Svetsky? Yeah, I, I, I'm Svetsky Riots now. Okay. So, you know, trying to do the, the whole moving into, just back into content stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I was Ghost of Svetsky at some point. I think that one got banned as well for whatever. I don't know, maybe I was reposting some vaccine stuff. Who knows? Something, right? So, it's just the the amount of effort, right? Like, the amount of headache, the amount of effort, and having to sort of hold that the entire time. It just sucks, and I don't know. Like um, the 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 return on the energy and effort invested is just not there. So for me, I'm you know looking to remove that and cleanse that. And plus, plus it just makes you an unnecessary target. You know, I I was reading somewhere it says you know, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this, but it was something along the lines of a high value man just sort of keeps his opinion to himself. And you know these these are all my opinions at the end of the day. I believe they're consistent. I believe they make sense. I believe I've figured them out from first principles. I believe that, you know, the principles around what I'm discussing, you know, are generally consistent across, you know, you, you could probably find similar principles in, you know, people who talk about how to succeed in business or, you know, how to succeed in relationships or all this sort of stuff. Like what, what I've found through life is that most principles are actually quite similar, right? Mm -hmm. And th that's essentially what this book is about. Like, we're going to talk about later is like the the principles of how to live a virtuous moral life. They're pretty damn similar across the world, right? It doesn't matter. Literally, Bitcoiners in the next coming decades are going to be the socio-economic elite of the world. Maybe. I mean, that's that's my presumption, yeah. and I think that Bitcoin just wins through its sheer force of economic gravity at the end of the day. And then, if you're smart enough to hold your Bitcoin over that period of time. You are actually not going to be a fucking pleb, you idiot. You're going to be... Maybe it is, though, because a lot of people in that kind of self-identifying group of plebs, I think that's a, 
a sort of like a minority group. I don't. I I clash against them. A lot of them I think are morons. I just think a lot of them don't really have much Bitcoin. Um, I think a lot of it's virtuous behavior, and they might not be the elites. They might be the the pleb. They might be the peasants of Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, maybe of Bitcoin, but still, even if they've worked up to have you know half a Bitcoin, they'll probably have a hell of a lot more than a person who starts buying Bitcoin, say in twenty thirty, right? So, so that there is going to still be a gap. So, my my whole point is. You need to start uh, acting and behaving, first of all, like an adult, but then secondly, like an adult with some level of nobility. And nobility is kind of uh, a, an amalgamation of higher virtues, you know, so, sort of degrading yourself and calling yourself like a plebeian, like a peasant or something like that. I, I just find stupid. And um, I guess maybe I've been reading too much Nietzsche lately, but like the, the, I have this disdain for like uh, glorifying the averageization of man you know like for me that there's just being a pleb is pathetic like be something great aspire to greatness aspire to difference aspire to yeah i make the assumption that okay if if we're all right about this bitcoin thing and it's the most important economic thing to happen um by its very nature it's also going to be a huge social event right like it'll 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 transform the way society is structured um well then uh, uh, are we just gonna drive around in Lambos and like hopefully Louis Vuitton jumpsuits? Yeah, maybe the Lambos are okay, but the Louis Vuitton jumpsuits are a little bit strange. Um, but are we gonna become just like you know rich losers? Um, why did why why would that make someone a loser? I I think you know the kind of people who generally you know go out and just try to make money for that sake are generally like uh, trying to fill a gap in themselves. So. You know, looking through the lens of, like, for example, Tony Robbins' six needs structure, like, they're trying to feed significance, um, and they're out of kilter on all sorts of other things. So they think by buying a Lambo, they're going to fill a hole in themselves. Okay. Now, there's a very big difference of... Um, what if you just, like, driving fast? If you like... Sexy car. Well, yeah, that, that's different, you know, but I think most of them don't. Like, most of the... I know a bunch of people, from particularly back in Australia, who can't drive for shit. They, they have zero, like, understanding of what a car is how the fucking engine works, but they're flushing it around because they think it's going to get their dick wet. Like, and, and that's probably the majority of them. Yeah. There's a difference between an appreciation of the machine. Yeah, I, I think the point I'm trying to get... To, well, there's two points. Like, firstly, are you, are you anti-status and status symbols? No, not at all. I think people, people can do it. I think there is a... Is there a use for status symbols for, for projecting status? Um, I think it depends what level of status you're at. So Jack Dorsey, for example, doesn't need to drive around in a Lambo, um, to have status. Um, whereas maybe an up and coming fake it till you make it kind of, yeah, 20 year old entrepreneur or something like that might need to do that. Um, yeah, we are 10 years. 50 Bitcoin could be significant and that gets passed down and Fair, that's the yeah, lead yeah, of that point. Yeah, during, yeah, totally, and totally. during this transitory phase, diff different people, and it, we all depend on like how much gets passed down, mm -hmm. how much gets spent. You know, if you give my son 100 Bitcoin right now and I die, I'm not saying I've got 100 Bitcoin, but like you give him 100 Bitcoin, he's going straight out and he's buying new trainers. Mm -hmm, cars, mm -hmm. and he's going to send it. Exactly, yeah. And it's going to so, filter out. Yeah. Yeah. So like it is a transitory phase, but we're talking generally about whoever becomes, uh, Wealthy elite via Bitcoin mm -hmm. during these periods. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And they, they all of a sudden find themselves, you know, from, you know, one socioeconomic class, you know, catapulted into another. And and that that that's a big shift. And and sort of there's I was reading somewhere it's like someone said, you know, the the lion, for example, behaves majestically because he's been at the top of the food chain for millions of years. And it's had time to evolve to, you know, basically the lion doesn't go out and just fucking kill everything so that he can't eat anymore, right? Like, so so there is like this natural evolution of, you know, territory and how the lion behaves and everything. Human beings went from like the middle of the food chain to the top in like 70,000 years and we haven't learned to sort of evolve this this majesty around how we deal with stuff. Now, you know, whether that's true or not, um, you know, I was, I was some anthropologist talk about that, but I thought that was like an interesting thing. It's like, and it's it's the same on a micro level as if you know you're some dude who's I mean and we see it like 
how like some of these early Bitcoiners who like stumbled in and tripped over and fell into Bitcoin at 10 cents, um, then all of a sudden have a billion dollars. Um, you know, what are they doing that like, you know, Brock Pierce is, you know, an example, like the guy's, you know, he's yeah. a vacuum cleaner basically. And, um, and what good has he done? <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of Brock. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> okay. But so we- imagine, imagine a bunch of those running around. Yeah, but but this is well, maybe not Brock, but the you know, the term power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. For some reason, good people turn bad in power or with power. Because they haven't developed, I think, the virtues. I just disagree. I think some I think it's a couple of things. I think some people do, and I think power changes you and money is power. You know, wealth can be power. And that's why I talked about um you know that kind of like expression of status that projecting status that comes with money because maybe you get money and you still aren't getting some form of respect mm-hmm. that you want so you have to ex- you have to project some people feel the need to project that so people are like oh he's got money or oh, he's he's something and i'm i'm wondering whether there's in the end the incentive structure of money or the what money does to people whether it's bitcoin pounds dollars yen Whatever the fuck it is, I I wonder if I wonder if humans just act the same, and I wonder if like we are kidding ourselves with this time preference mm-hmm. thing because the time preference really is a lesson for accumulating Bitcoin and accumulating wealth. That if you don't rush, you know, if you're patient, if you just stack your this out so you keep building, you know, every four years you get that bump, and then may, at some point you get rich. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Alex Svetsky. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.